just after the Good Brothers, and the Good Brothers, <laughs> and it was so cold in that arena, it was, you know, 40 below on the outside, and it was just probably just as cold on the inside of the arena, and the Good Brothers had taken their gloves, like leather gloves, and they cut all the fingers tips off, so they were on stage, you know, playing their guitars and stuff with the, just their fingertips showing, and they're, you know, it was that cold. And, uh, of course, I didn't have an extra pair of gloves that I could do that to. So, anyway, we you know, froze our fingers off. Played the uh, played the gig, and uh, we are just out in the parking lot, packed up our stuff, and we are ready to go. And Hoyt Axton was just about to go on. And I was kind of disappointed. And, well, geez, I never got to meet Hoyt Axton. When am I ever going to get to meet him again, you know? And we get in all ready to go, turn the van, and brrr, brrr. Nothing. Van was dead. Battery was dead. Okay, so we call the tow truck, and we're standing out there freezing, waiting for the tow truck because you don't want to go inside and miss it because we're in an arena parking lot, and there were like hundreds of cars, and we were, you know, somewhere out in the middle of it. And so we're standing there, you know, I'm kicking myself, and geez, well, this really sucks. This is the worst night of my life. And I'm... Something caught my eye over in the light, you know, you can see toward the arena, and you know how at night the every, your breath, really cold, your breath is like, you know, just really, really visible. And it's like, man, it looks like a, a locomotive coming in, like just this great big huge puff of breath. And it's like, there's a guy in a cowboy hat, and he's steaming this way. And it was a long way, too. And it just it was just like a train coming at us, and there's this big, big guy. He's like, what, was, what is this? I'm not thinking anything, you know, like, who is this? <laughs> he goes, well, which one of you's Ray? And I, well, it's me. And I, holy jeez, it's Hoyt Axton. You know, big cowboy hat, a nice jacket, you know, one of those cowboy jackets, wide open collar, you know, white shirt, wide open collar, and he says, well, I want to meet you. He comes over, shakes my hand, and we start talking. And uh, I don't begin to tell you what we all talked about. But he was, and I, I felt like, holy jeez, we should get inside. You're going to die of you know, pneumonia, which he did soon after. But uh, anyway, he was, um, we talked about all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, don't, uh, the whole th gist of the conversation was uh, don't let them try and change you. And that was the thing that they did to him. They tried to change him, and it just didn't catch. So the whole uh, the whole idea was stick to your roots, and look where it got me. But uh, and I did. But uh, I do remember one thing that he said, and um, we mentioned "Joy to the World" because he wrote that song, and it was huge, number one hit for Three Dog Night. And he said, "You know how I knew that I had made it." He said, it wasn't the money, it wasn't anything else. He says, I was in Georgia, or I forget where he said, and I pulled over to get gas. And, I, and there was this deserted, desolate, little run-down crap hole of a place. Pulled up to get gas, and he's sitting in the car, and the guy's filling up the gas. And he just happened to look over at the stoop of the store, this general store, and there's this little little kid playing in the dirt with sticks he had nothing right and just little kid playing in the dirt and he's singing jeremiah was a bullfrog happy as anything just sitting in the dirt playing and singing his song and he said that's when i knew i made it it wasn't the money it was that moment so that always stuck with me he was a working man <laughs>